The way operated dump valve is designed to hold liquid levels in production vessels such as heater treaters, free water knockouts, and saltwater disposal systems. In this video, we'll be performing routine maintenance with a full repair kit on a two inch weight operated dump valve. This valve can be repaired in line, but if it has to be removed from the piping, start by securing it in a vise. Use a 5 8 wrench on the nipple connecting the drip pot to the valve body. There are no repair kit components for the drip pot, but it is important to clean this out when doing maintenance. Remove the weight by loosening the bolt with a 9 16 wrench and sliding the weight off. Remove both bolts from the lever hub with a 9 16 and 11 16 wrench to remove the lever. Loosen the set screw with a 9 16 wrench and then remove the lever hub from the shaft. If the lever hub is difficult to remove from the shaft, gently tap each side with a mallet to loosen and remove. Using an adjustable wrench, remove the trunnion plug. Remove and discard the o-ring from the trunnion plug. On four and six inch models, this will be a gasket and not an o-ring. It may also be stuck to the valve instead. With a pick, screwdriver, or similar tool, remove and discard the bushing from the shaft. With an adjustable wrench, next remove the stuffing box nut. Unthread the stuffing box, then pull it out with the shaft. If stuck, tap the shaft out from the opposite end using a large center punch. Then separate the shaft from the stuffing box. Remove and discard the Teflon thrust washer from the shaft. Remove and discard the O-ring from the stuffing box. Remove and discard the bushing, packing ring, and packing from the stuffing box. On four to six inch models, there will be a follower instead Keep the follower as it is not part of the repair kit. Remove the four bolts from the bonnet with a 9 16 wrench and remove the bonnet. If it's stuck, pry it gently with a flathead screwdriver. Remove and discard the snap rings with pliers. Next, remove the pin and trunnion hub. Unthread the diaphragm bolt with a 7 8 or adjustable wrench and remove the stem assembly from the body, pulling straight so the pin does not fall out into the body. Pull the pin from the stem assembly, then pull the stem out through the diaphragm bolt. Then remove and keep the diaphragm retainer. Remove and discard the diaphragm from the diaphragm bolt. Using a 9 16 and 11 16 wrench, remove the housing bolts. Remove the housing. You may need to pry it apart with a flathead screwdriver. Pull up on the diaphragm to remove the entire assembly from the body. Set this aside for now. Next, we'll inspect the removable seat. If it has no noticeable damage or potential leak paths and you do not have the Kimray seat wrench, it's best to leave the seat in place. If you are removing the seat, use a Kimray seat wrench and an adjustable wrench. Discard the gasket from the removable seat. Take the body out of the vise and replace it with the diaphragm assembly upside down, securing the neck of the diaphragm plate in the vise. Unscrew and remove the pivot bolt with an adjustable wrench. Then, the ratio plug, seat, and seat disc. If they're stuck together, use a punch to separate the ratio plug and a flathead screwdriver to remove the seat. Discard the seat, but keep the ratio plug and seat disc. Remove and discard the diaphragm. With the valve fully disassembled, next we'll clean and inspect the components. Inspect that the shaft is not bent. If it's bent, it will need to be replaced. If you removed the seat, inspect for signs of corrosion where it meets the valve body. If there is corrosion, it won't seat properly and you will need a new valve body. 
verify that the housing communication hole is clear and free from debris. Examine and clean the drip pot and needle valve. Lastly, use a parts washer or wire brush to clean the following parts. We are now ready to assemble the valve. Secure the diaphragm plate in a vise. Stack the following components on top. Diaphragm with the Kimray logo facing up. Diaphragm disc with the letters facing up. The seat, which is reversible. Ratio plug with the part numbers facing up and the pivot. Tighten the pivot with a three quarter inch socket to 10 foot pounds. Remove the diaphragm assembly and place the body into the vise. If you remove the seat, apply all-purpose grease to the seat area of the body. Flip the removable seat upside down and apply all-purpose grease. Then install the gasket. Install the seat into the body with the Kimray seat wrench. Do not over-tighten the seat or the gasket can tear. Place the diaphragm assembly on the body with the seat disc facing down, aligning the bolt holes with the diaphragm. Then place the housing on top of the equalizing port 90 degrees counterclockwise from the valve inlet. Insert all housing bolts and thread the nuts on by hand. Make sure the lifting rings are placed 180 degrees from each other. Tighten the bolts with the 9 16 and 11 16 wrench to 25 foot pounds. Use a crisscross pattern to avoid any misalignment. Place the diaphragm retainer onto the diaphragm with the part numbers facing up. Then insert the diaphragm bolt through the retainer. Next, insert the stem. Then slide the stem pin through the lower end of the stem. Hold the stem pin in place and install the stem diaphragm assembly into the diaphragm plate. Tighten the diaphragm bolt by hand, then tighten fully with an adjustable wrench, being careful not to over tighten it. Kimray recommends a 7 8 crow foot wrench to 10 foot pounds. Insert the link pin through the stem and hub link. Press the two snap rings into place one on each side of the link pin. Orient the head of the trunnion hub towards the valve inlet with the arrows pointing up. Lift the trunnion hub slightly and place the bonnet over it. Align the rounded side of the bonnet with the valve inlet. Start the four bonnet bolts by hand and then tighten with a 9 socket to 25 foot-pounds using a crisscross pattern to avoid misalignment. With the flat edge of the long end of the shaft facing down, insert the shaft through the training hub. The long end will be sticking out of the side opposite of the equalizing port. The trunnion plug and stuffing box assemblies are slightly different for the two and three inch valves compared to the four and six inch valves. Apply grease to the threads of the trinium plug and stuffing box to avoid damaging the O-rings. On the stuffing box, the O-ring will be on the side with a smaller opening. Install an O-ring on the trinium plug. Then install another O-ring on the stuffing box. Apply grease to both O-rings after installation. Install one of the packings on the short end of the shaft. Place the trunnion plug over the shaft and packing, and then thread it into the bonnet and tighten with a 1 and 3 8 socket or adjustable wrench. Kimray recommends 25 foot pounds. Slide the thrust washer onto the shaft. Then slide the stuffing box over the shaft and thread it into the bonnet with an adjustable wrench. Grease the inside of the stuffing box and the end of the shaft. Push the packing onto the packing ring. Then insert them into the stuffing box. Follow with the bushing. Using the bushing, push the packing all the way into the stuffing box. 
Thread the stuffing box nut onto the stuffing box, just hand tight, and then another half turn with an adjustable wrench. Over tightening the stuffing box can prevent the shaft from rotating. Attach the lever hub to the end of the shaft with the lever arm channel facing out. Tighten the set screw securely with a 9 16th wrench. Attach the lever with a 9 16th and 11 16th wrench on both bolts. Place the weight on the arm and secure it in place with a 9 16th wrench. If the nipple connector was removed from the drip pot, apply blue Loctite to the nipple before tightening it onto the drip pot. Apply blue Loctite to the other end of the nipple as well. Thread the nipple and drip pot into the housing equalizing port until tight and the drip pot is facing down. How about three to four full turns? If you remove the bleed valve for cleaning purposes, apply blue Loctite to the threads before threading it into the bottom of the drip pot. If you have any questions about the weight operated dumb valves or the Kimray tools used, Contact Kimray Product and Customer Service.